All right, this looks like a guitar, huh? Very, very close. So this is, if I push this here, we're really close to uh, the, f the body here. So I'm just gonna use that as my fall off after the 14th fret. It's very little, but I need to shim this underneath. And so it's round a little over an eighth at the beginning and it tapers off to nothing. And I've been kind of debating whether or not to make it rosewood or whether to make it mahogany or spruce or what to make it out of. And I decided I've got this little hunk of mahogany that came from guitar number one, actually, that happens to be slightly thicker than I absolutely need it to be. So I'm going to cut this off and put it in there um, as my shim. And so it's going to sit, you know, wherever I need it to. I should actually mark where that'll be at least roughly where that'll be. Somewhere around that area. Okay, so we'll come back to come out past these two bits of the rosette. So if we came out to about here, so we're about an eighth inch thick there. That will give me what I need to do to, um, to cut the shim pretty close to where I want it and then I'm, I'm it's gonna take a couple of bits I'm gonna cut it to length and then I'll cut it to a, a, a width um, it'll work out how to get it flush and this flush together we'll see what I have to do there um, it's gonna take a little bit of fiddling to fix this unfortunately I'm gonna sit this back on here around my center lines and uh, clamp it on and then I'm going to take my straight edge at the center line and then I'll pull it down oh, man. so there where let's go with like that I'm going to get a measurement here and then I'm going to go look at the plans to see what it says that should be the top of the fretboard should be at what are we almost very very close to a quarter inch hold on there let's go with like that we might be actually taller than that now yeah we're more than three more than a quarter of an inch we're um a quarter is eight thirty seconds we're at nine thirty seconds yeah nine thirty seconds so let's get enough onto this paper that's close to the top of the fretboard Oh, yeah. So, I'm going to say, hold on, let's get to the 30 seconds. Right there is at 9.30 seconds. Okay, so, according to this, that angle is perfect. It absolutely sits perfectly. All right. So, all right. I like where my angle is. I'm not going to touch it. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to cut it to length because I can do that. Um, and then I'll solve the rest of it here in a second. All right. We got it cut to length. Now I'm around the 14th fret on the fretboard that's already been cut to rough size. I'm actually going to mark out the shims rough size. And then we'll run to the bandsaw and make a quick couple of cuts. And I'm just gonna piece this together in whatever way I can manage. Um, I'm using as much of my future thinking as I can, but some of this is a bit winged. Winged, wung, winged, wunged, wank, made up as I go. So I'm just figuring it out as I go. Some of this might be right, some of this might be terrible, some of this may actually give me problems later. But I'm figuring if I can cut this to slightly bigger than I need, then I can hold it up here and notch for where the dovetail goes because I can actually feel right there. I could actually, with, with the neck off, I could mark that dovetail and cut out enough for that dovetail. I'm, I'm not going to be perfect with that dovetail. I don't need it to be. I just need it to make room to clear the dovetail. I just want it to not interfere. Then I can put it down here, possibly, maybe with glue, I doubt it. Um, what I'm going to do is try to get it as close to the thickness I require before I glue it down. Um, and try to get it as close to the 
width as I need because I would like to be able to get it. What I prefer to do is put the shim in after the fretboard goes on the body because then I can, I can do stuff. I can still do stuff to make this shim fit. I can still adjust things. So still working through that, but I do need to get this thing shaped correctly. So got it marked for the, the widths. I'm just going to run to the bandsaw real fast and slice these to that width. You don't need to see all that. I'll be back in a second. All right, now we've got our shim roughly shaped, slightly wider than necessary. I can pop the neck off. I'm gonna move these extra pieces out of my way here. Very bit, we don't need them yet. I'm going to pop the fretboard, or pop the neck off once more. Yeah, that's fitting really nicely. Okay, so now I can take my thick end here, set it here, and lay out where the dovetail actually is, like this, right there, and do a little of this. So as long as I cut enough for it to fit into there, is that. I will be fine. So I'm going to run to the bandsaw and make a quick little notch. All right, cut myself a notch. It fits over that block just fine. The contact is already beautiful for the most part, and I can fudge with that a little bit later. Right now it's about twice, burp. the angle is not perfect on this. It's about twice as thick as I need it to be. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat my butt off, and I'm going to run this I'm going to make a mark right here and right here. And I've got about, yeah, literally about a half of it, to, half of its thickness to remove. Uh, see the lines? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat and I'm going to cut that on the bandsaw because if I wreck this, I've got plenty of scrap. I'm just going to cut this. I'm going to cut some of that off on the bandsaw. Maybe I should do it on the table saw. No, we'll do it on the bandsaw. No, we should do this on the table saw. It'll be more reliable. Um, and I can do it safely, uh, safe enough. Yeah, because it's only going to take, it'll cut it back to about here. And that's where the cut will stop. Yeah, I think that's what we'll do. And I can do it in two passes. I'll do it and flip it. I'll do it thin and flip it. Okay, so real quick to the table saw. Okay, all ten fingers, all ten toes. Just got a little bit sliced off. So now it's about close to the line. We didn't quite make it to the line. Okay, welcome back to the shop. Again, take another little time. Um, I left you last where I'd fitted the neck pocket um, so that the neck is set beautifully, um, which it still is. I haven't changed any of that. Um, the next step here, once the, with the neck on now, we're sitting proud on purpose, remember? We have this weird little thing I've got to fix. I want to make this area filled in with stuff. So that gets me my, my bridge height the way I want it. So the angle is good, but I need to fill in this spot so that there's uh, support for the fretboard. So I've got this little shim, but it's a bit thick right now. It's oversized, and I need to taper this from, from this surface. This end needs to be flush with the top of this, which is not. It's up a little about 30 second of an inch, down to basically nothing. Um, this is a tough little thing to grab onto and perform that very operation upon. Um, so I've got this method that I'm working out that I think is going to be okay. So what I'm doing is, this side is basically flat. I set it down here on the surface of the, of the area I want to get flush. And I've got this tiny, tiny little C-clamp. It's so small that there's not enough room for a call, but on the inside I'm not real worried. And inside of here we just clamp this shim right in place. Because I'm, I've struggled with how do you get how do you get a small gradual taper exactly the way you want it off the guitar? I just I couldn't come up with a better way. So this is the way I'm coming up with. Um, it is not anything I took from anywhere else. This is just conjured up out of my head, um, and it may or may not be great. It may or may not be the right way. It may be the wrong way, but. It's how I'm doing it. So all I'm going to do is take a scraper here and just go after it. And on, it'll have to be done in two stages. I'll get this side flush 
first and then I can take the clamp off here I can clamp it here and go and feather it out to nothing from there so that's what I'm gonna do um, it's gonna be a little boring and a lot of scraping so bring you some music here So after, I don't know, 10 minutes, if I hold this down and I run my scraper into it, I don't hit, <clears throat> I don't hit until I'm in a ways. So I'm going to call that done and it's not, not hanging up anywhere. So I've got enough room here to clamp and then I can come from here and scrape it flat or scrape it, taper it down. I have to work out how I'm going to clamp that yet because I'm not entirely certain. Um, I'm working that out. So once I get that figured out, I will. Uh, I'll bring you back. Um, but the basic gist is we're going to take now from from basically this point on and head towards zero with it. Um, and it might get a little bit shorter even because I don't need it to be visible here. I don't need it. Don't need any thickness really out this far. So <clears throat> that's where we are. I don't know quite sure when or how I'm going to hold on to this yet. Not when, but how. Not entirely certain how I'm going to hang on to this yet. i got to grab it here and I'm probably going to put two clamps on. <clears throat> and I want to make sure those clamps aren't in the way of the scraper. Uh, so I want to start back here and, uh, and feather it to zero. I wonder if that can hold well enough. Can I? Yeah, let's drop stuff. I wonder if I can... So I think what I'll do is so what I think I'll do is figure out how to hold this in such a way that it allows me to keep things uh, from slipping around on me, and then we'll uh, I'll bring you back when I've got that figured out. All right. Well, I start simple. I just put some masking tape here so it can hold in tension. Um, it's pulled as tight this way as I can get it, and it's kind of lifting up just a little bit, which is fine. That tells me I've got it good and tight back here. And at the very least, it seems to be holding up fine to get the bulk of this off. So, at the very least, I can do this method until I get closer to the zero point. Yeah, this seems to be, at least for now, sturdy. I suspect the tape will break at some point and I'll have to replace it. So far, I think that's going to work okay. So, I'm going to go after it with this method and see if it holds up. If not, we'll figure out another method. Okay, now that I've got my final height here established and basically my length, my patience has run out and I'm concerned about wrecking the, f uh, the, f the top of the guitar body. So I'm going to go with a, uh, an alternate method to get this to that taper somewhat, hopefully, in a way that will do it fairly well. Um, I'm just going to take and lay down some double stick tape on this jointed piece of 2x4 scrap that I've got laying around. And uh, I'm going to stick it down and use various methods to reach zero, but I'm also going to do some, uh, excuse me, some things to make sure that I don't overshoot. So this is all, a, a, most of this problem, or most of what I'm solving here is, is kind of a chicken and egg thing. I need the shim to be the right size, but I also want to be concerned about um, when it gets glued onto the body or when, it, when things go together. So when I go to glue the neck on, I'd like the shim to be done. But in order to get the shim the right size, I need the thickness proper. In order to get the thickness proper, it's easiest to do it on the saw on the on the body itself. So I'm kind of running into this weird sort of chicken and egg problem. But now I've got it. I've got this thickness taken care of. So as long as I stay, you know, in fact, I'm going to put a mark. And as long as my thickness stays, in fact, I'm going to put another mark on here, which is a more accurate point of stoppage. I would like to have right around in here 
should not go past that line, whatever I'm doing, because this area is good. So as long as I can taper whatever this length is up to that area, in fact, we're going to make zero point B right around in here, somewhere in there. So if I feather that, if I go to the zero to that line, it's going to bevel this end, and that's fine. That should give me the right angle and uh, and not mess up this part. So I'm going to just kind of various tools. I'm probably going to do some of this power with the drum with the belt sander. Um, I could actually shim this just a little bit and run it through the drum sander. If I wanted to calculate what that angle was, I could probably make the shim by doing just this and shim up one end and run this through the drum sander. But I don't feel like calculating that angle. Um, so I'm going to. I'm going to go after this on the drum, on the belt sander just a little bit, and then I'll bring you back. All right, I went over to the belt sander, held it up, so we beveled end up here. We come kind of pretty close to the edge on that. Still haven't touched our marks. I did ding a little bit here, but that's okay. It'll it'll be all right. Um, so I think I'm just going to take real quickly. I'll just take a straight edge and take a peek here at what we've got. And it's pretty good. That tapered nicely. I'm actually really pleased with that. That's going to be all right, I think. Um, what I'm going to do real fast is just a, a real quick blend of those two faces there with my. There we go. That's it. I'm not even. I'm just dusting the the marker down, just barely, because I don't want to take anything off that thickness. Really, I need that to stay. Um, I'm pretty sure that's pretty close. Um, what I have to do now is get this off of the double side tape without destroying it. We're going to do that with denatured alcohol or mineral spirits or whatever it takes to uh, peel that off. I think denatured alcohol. So, All right. So we did that. Removed it. It was mineral spirits for this carpet tape that I have. Some some adhesives come up with denatured alcohol. Some come up with mineral spirits. Mineral spirits took care of that, so I did not have any failure of the wood. And so now I'm checking this. And I was fine with the reason I'm going to zero here is because I actually want the fretboard to fall off I want to have to clamp it down I don't want it lifted I want it if anything down level would be fine but down would be fine too so when I put my straight edge here I drop oh maybe a 30 second down here under this so that's perfect that's absolutely where I want to be that means when the fretboard goes on here this can be on this way the fretboard goes on at the nut location there's just a tiny bit of need to clamp that and then it'll it'll set perfectly flat so that'll be perfection i am very pleased with that that'll do just fine okay before i do the fretboard i have one other trouble um as you can see illustrated now i have a truss rod slot and i have a, a access hole for the adjuster right well with the neck up as high as it is when you put the truss rod in, it is not down low enough to be reached by my wrench. So no matter what I do, I can't get up. I need, to, I need the wrench to be able to aim up a little higher. So, so what I shall do is I'm going to take that wood that's down there in the way right there, this bit and the upper part of the... Hang on, I've got a thing I can point with. I'm going to take this bit of it and this side bit out with a chisel so that I can aim the I can aim the wrench up and I'll probably have to pull it back about three quarters of an inch. Um, I don't think let me double check that yeah I don't have to take anything from the shim. I just need to take a bit out of the top here to reach that the gap that's down there and widen things just a little bit so that there's some wiggle room down in there. Um, this is not a fun task because it's really right in this area here that I have to take some wood out. So what I'm going to do real fast is mark where I want to take the wood. And then I'll probably come back maybe about here. And we'll just, I'm just going to notch out the top. Whew, that sounds scary, doesn't it? I'm just going to notch that much out. That'll give the wrench access to get up into that truss rod. It's an unfortunate compromise that I have to make in order to adjust for this goofy thing. So decisions made early on, 
I probably should have, uh, I don't know, been more smart about this top lock. But anyway, we'll fix this. I'll uh, pull you back out again and we'll do some chisel work here. All right, so I'm set here. Got a couple of chisels, and the first thing I want to do is mark away the, mark out or, you know, score the fibers a bit of where I want to cut. So, very gently, just take a tiny bit, just to tap. And we'll take our smaller chisel here, we'll extend that one a bit, I guess, and then we'll uh, do our long, our end here. This doesn't have to be pretty, nobody will see it until they start to go to change the neck or change the fretboard or reset the neck. That will be the only time you really see it. Um, but I wanted to make sure, see if I can do this safely without effing anything up here. Just keep on, yeah, that's going to split because of the. It's unsupported there because of the because of the slot that's in it. Um, trying to decide which to which effort to make first. This seems to work. I can do this calmly. Going for as low impact. Oops, sorry, hold on. Going for as low impact as I can because you know we got a lot of work into this thing already. So I'd hate to lose much of it. Or let's say any for that matter. Okay, let's flip some of those away. We'll come back here and we'll pare down again. This time I won't bother with the, uh, just want it to cut. Sever those fibers. I won't bother with the mallet here because there's truly nothing underneath right here. So the sooner I can get away from that unsupported fibers area, the better. through that area so this can just pop right out that's good so some interesting um, retrofitting I guess <sighs> this is the best way to might be a good word for that um, yeah that did not do much damage that's good that was what I was hoping to do is avoid damaging anything there and then this stuff actually should come away pretty nicely because now it's all fully supported down there. We can just come after it here. And I think I'll try to mark that area with this is the downward side of this. And we'll just widen the slot down here. That's all we'll do here. use the wider chisel to do the widening here. How about that? So it'll be at least somewhat square. Okay. So that's there. Now let's see if we can pair a little more here. Don't want to do too much because I've still got to sever fibers up the hill here. Try to do a clean job of this if I can. We're basically chopping a mortise, so you can do it that way. You do the pair backwards kind of thing here. Let's, uh, let's remove some fibers here so I have a, a wall I can work aside, alongside of. There we go. And like that, and then we can just come in and pop those things out. Now we can come in again with the big chisel. We'll take a little chance to score these fibers a bit. And then we can come right back with our side slice here and do the same again until we reach our depth. We'll just keep doing that.
keep going until I reach the bottom. I don't actually need to go this deep with it, but it doesn't hurt that I am because then it looks a little bit more on purpose. A little less accidental. Not quite to the bottom yet here. One more pop. It should be good. Now I should be able to just come in. Yep, that worked. Good. So this will look a little better, at least. And I think I'll come in from this edge here. You can't really see what I'm doing that well, but here, let's get you a better angle. There. That's kind of what I've done. So I still have the, uh, I'm put a little glue under there. That needs a little bit of love. There's some fibers just hanging there. And so we've got the left side of this wall. There's a, it's, it goes through here, you know, but it, there's nothing here. So what I'm gonna do is just sort of try to taper back a little bit so that that area isn't a shelf and it's more of a tapered access. Try to do that with my mallet here, gently. Like that, that'll work. And we're just taking some end grain here because that's the direction that the heel block, or the toe block runs. The neck block, I should say. And that just makes this look even cleaner, is all. What we're doing this for, so that it just doesn't look so Super packed, Bobby. It also gives that wrench a little bit more wiggle room if it needs it. It might not need it, but better to have it than not. All right, that should that should be a reasonably clean task. All right, I'm gonna pull you back out and we'll put the neck back on and see how this did for a truss rod axis. Mm -hmm.